Hey all, welcome back. You know that Sid was always curious about technology. One day, while talking to his friend on WhatsApp, he thought to himself, "How is it possible to talk to someone miles away, not just through voice but also video calls?" Then another question popped up: How can we access data, files, or even watch videos from any corner of the world in just a few seconds? To find answers, she turned to unit number 2 computer networks. After completing unit number 1 and unit 3 database management, he realized this was the perfect time to explore how the world stays connected. To make it simple, she divided this portion into two parts. In part 1, he will be covering what is network and its different types, switching techniques, transmission media and topologies. These topics will give us the foundation of how communication happens seamlessly across the globe. So just like Sid, let's uncover the magic behind computer networks step by step. It is a complete theoretical portion, so keep the points in mind. In the first topic, we will try to understand what is network. When we connect devices to each other, it is called as a network. So it is nothing but a collection of interconnected devices. What are the advantages? We can share resources, storage as well as software, and it improves communication. Are there any disadvantages regarding network? Yes, the system in the network should be sophisticated and complex. If it is not managed properly, the services become unusable. In case of client server design, if server fails, we cannot carry out any work. And file security is also important over the network. Proceeding to the next topic that is components of the computer network. So here is the list of the different components. In the network we will have different computers. The main will be server. We have different clients. To connect computers to each other, we need some hardware devices, and even to pass information from one device to another, we need communication channel. We may need some software also for the networking. And finally, there will be some services provided by the network. The first term in networking we use as nodes or host. It is nothing but the devices which are connected over the network. What is server? It is also nothing but a device or computer, but it's the main device which is used for sharing of data, software, and hardware. The third term is client. One main computer will be there, which is called as server. Other computers are called as clients. So client also is nothing but a node or a host over the network. Here are some of the hardware devices. There are two different communication channels through which data is passed: wired and wireless. There will be some software also used for networking, like network protocol and network operating system. Here are the services which are provided by the network, like DNS, domain name system, file sharing, and some other functionalities we will be getting. Now we are going to discuss the important topic that is types of network. Based on the geographical area, here are different types of network: LAN, WAN, PAN, and MAN. And depending on the role, we have two types: peer-to-peer -peer and client-server. What is local area network? That is LAN. In case of LAN, the computers are spread over one kilometer, like in office, building, or in a factory. The main advantage of using LAN is resource sharing. As the devices are connected through wires or Wi-Fi, the communication is secure and fast. The second type of network is metropolitan area network. This network is spread over a city within 30 to 40 kilometers. We can connect different LANs also to a MAN. The example is cable network. Here is the third one that is WAN, wide area network. It spreads over cities, countries or even continents. It provides fast and efficient exchange of information. It is nothing but a internet. It provides high speed at the lower cost. In WAN the smaller networks are connected to each other. That's why WAN is nothing but a network of many networks. Here is the fourth type of network that is PAN, personal area network. In PAN the devices of individual person are connected within 10 meters. We can say within our home. We can use this for personal work or for sharing data. We know inside our home generally we use Wi-Fi connection. Here is the types of the network based on role. First is peer to peer in P2P network that is peer to peer network each device is considered as a peer it can work as a client or a server the main advantage is to share resources it is suitable for home or small companies one more point we can note down it is inexpensive and easy to install keep all the points in mind now what about client server network In this type of network one device will act as a server which will be main computer and other computers are called as clients 
client will generally send request to the server then server will process it and respond to the client in this architectures all the clients will depend on the server that's why it is called as centralized system it is cost efficient server will provide the information to all the clients Remember the first network is ARPANET. The full form is Advanced Research Project Agency Network. It is started in 1969 by US Department of Defense. Let's discuss about internet. Internet means interconnected network. It is a network of networks. After types of network we are proceeding to one more important topic that is switching techniques. Here are the ways in which we transmit data over the network. The first is circuit switching, second is message switching and the third one is packet switching. In this type of switching, there will be a direct physical line between sender and receiver. The information will pass through over it. Here is the example, local telephone network. Then what about message switching? In this type of switching technique, there is no direct physical connection between sender and receiver. First the data will send to the switching office, then from switching office the data will go to the receiver. Here is the third type of switching technique that is packet switching. In this type of switching technique also the information will go to the switching office but it will break down into smaller packets. Then the packets will opt for the smallest route and then it will reach to the destination. Now let's talk about some data communication terminologies. The first is data channel. It is a medium through which we carry information. Baud is the unit to measure the information capacity of a communication channel. S per second is used to measure the speed of information which is generally through phone lines or modems. Then what about bandwidth? It refers the amount of data transmitted or received per unit time. The next term is data transfer rate. It is the amount of data transferred per second. Moving ahead to the third important topic that is transmission media. It is categorized into two types, guided and unguided. There are three types of guided media, twisted pair cable, coaxial cable and optical fibers. Here we are actually providing the physical wiring. And there are total six unguided media, microwave, radio wave, satellite microwave and here there are three more, infrared, laser and bluetooth. First of all, let's talk about guided. The first one is twisted pair cable. Look at the diagram. It is consist of two identical wire which are twisted together. Let's remember some of the advantages of twisted pair cable. It is easy to install, low in weight. It can be easily connected. It is inexpensive and flexible. Then what about disadvantages? It is not capable of carrying a signal over a long distance. It has low bandwidth and it supports data rate of 1 Mbps. In twisted pair cable, there are two types. The first one is unshielded. Here the copper wire will be without any insulation or shielding. And the second type is shielded twisted pair cable. In this type of cable, the conductors will be shielded with the copper wiring. That's why it provides a protection from the interference. It is costly also and difficult to install. The second guided media is coaxial cable. Look at the diagram. Here is a copper conductor which has a shielding of the insulator which is protected inside a metal mesh. And this whole setup has a protective layer of a plastic. Look at the advantages. It provides bandwidth up to 400 Mbps. Means compared to twisted pair cable, it has a better transmission rate. It can be used for cable network as well as for broadband transmission. Are there any disadvantages? It is expensive and not compatible with twisted pair cable. There are two types of coaxial cable, thick net and thin net. In this the cable is thicker and in thin net the cable will be thin. Moving ahead to the third guided media that is optical fiber. With optical fiber we carry data through light. It has three parts, core, cladding and protective covering. Look at the diagram. This white portion is called as core which can be made of glass or plastic through which light travels. And here is the covering for it which is called as cladding. This arrangement is protected through the protective covering. Let's keep in mind some of the advantages. It is immune to electrical and magnetic interference as information is passing in the form of light. It provides secure transmission that's why it is suitable for industrial environment. We can use it for broadband transmission too. 
look at some of the disadvantages it is fragile so it needs special care as it is made up of glass compared to other two guided media it is expensive we studied three types of guided media now it's time to check out for unguided media the first one is microwave it is also called as terrestrial microwave what are these microwaves these are electromagnetic waves as there is no physical wiring it transmit radio signals from one antenna to another it is also called as line of sight transmission because the signal passes through the atmosphere here are the examples of microwave cellular phone satellite network and wireless lan electromagnetic waves have frequency between 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz look at the diagram in this range we will get the microwaves it's time to check out the advantages of microwave it is cheaper and it offers freedom from land acquisition right as the transmission is through the atmosphere we can set up this type of communication over hilly areas or even over ocean now look at some of the disadvantages the communication is insecure why because it can be move out of the face and the communication may affect due to weather conditions like rain thunderstorm the second unguided media is radio waves these are also electromagnetic waves but it has low frequency here is one more property of the radio waves it is omnidirectional means it can propagate in all the direction here are the examples we use radio waves in case of fm radio as well as in case of television look at the range of the radio waves it is from 3 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz look at the diagram here is the range of the radio waves that's why it is a low frequency communication compared to microwaves let's look at the sum of the advantages of radio waves it will also share the advantages of microwaves it offers mobility even freedom from land acquisition right it provides ease of communication over difficult terrain it is cheaper as we are not digging for laying the cables even it will share the disadvantages of microwave insecure communication and susceptible to weather conditions the third unguided media is satellite microwave you know the working of satellite it accept the signals from the earth station it amplifies it and transmit to the other earth station it is generally used for weather forecasting radio tv signal broadcasting and for mobile communication let's go through some of the advantages it covers large area it is easy to install it is unaffected by the distance now look at the disadvantages for designing and deployment we need more time and higher cost as the data transmission is through the atmosphere so it is susceptible to weather conditions there are some more unguided media this is infrared it uses infrared light it is used for the communication of short ranges electromagnetic waves provide the frequencies between this range look at the diagram here is the range of the frequency provided by the infrared waves we use infrared light for tv remotes as well as for wireless speakers there is one more unguided media that is laser for laser transmission we need direct line of sight it requires a laser transmitter and a photosensitive receiver it is a line of sight that's why it is also called as point to point transmission this transmission is also will be through the atmosphere that's why it may affect by the weather look at this point it is unidirectional it travels in only one directional from transmitter to receiver here is the last unguided media that is bluetooth it has short range up to 30 feet here are some of the examples for bluetooth smartphone and speakers it is a radio waves with low power moving ahead to the fourth important topic network topology topology means it is a design of the nodes in a network there are three topologies star bus and tree what is star topology here we will have one central hub and all the devices will be connected to that hub look at the advantages ease of service it is easy to reconfigure The second advantage is one device per connection. If there is any failure node in the network, it will not affect the network. We can disconnect it any time. As it has centralized control, the fault can be easily detected. In this design, we have a central node. That's why the protocols are simple. Now let's read the disadvantages. We need long cable because all the devices are connecting directly to the central hub. We need lengthy cables. It is difficult to expand as adding new node involves connection to the central node. 
The third disadvantage is central node dependency. Whole network depends on the central node. If there is a problem with the central node, whole network will shut down. The second topology is bus or we can call it as a linear. Look at the diagram. We will have a single length of the transmission media. In this, the data will transfer in the form of packets. Generally, this topology is used in LAN. Here is a single common transmission line. That's why we need short cable length. It is a simple architecture and it is easy to extend. Then what about the disadvantages? Fault diagnosis is difficult. It is not centralized. That's why finding out the faulty node will be difficult. To extend node, we are using repeaters. So we need to reconfigure the repeaters every time when we want to add some nodes. Here the nodes are intelligent. As it is connected to the central bus, the node must decide who can use the network. Here is the third and last topology we are going to discuss that is tree topology. It is a combination of bus and star topology. Look at the diagram. There is a single transmission path as bus topology and all the devices are connected to the centralized hub. That's why it is a combination of bus and star topology. Look at the advantages. It uses point to point wiring supported by several hardware and software vendors. Flexible and scalable. Then what about disadvantages? It is difficult to configure and if backbone line breaks, entire segment goes down. You know network means we are connecting different computers to each other. Then how we can identify our computer over the network? For that we have two arrangements. The first is IP address and the second is MAC address. IP address means internet protocol address. There are two types of IP address IPv4 and IPv6. It is used to transfer data from one network to another network. It is a logical address. There is one more address called as MAC address. It is a physical address of the network card. Here is the form of the MAC address. Alright then, let's wrap today's video. In the next video, we will be moving to part 2 of this chapter where even more exciting concepts are waiting for you. So stay tuned, keep learning and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more inspiring journeys with Sid.